Good day, a warm welcome from myself, Neil Laubsche, and the Entrovet team. Today we're going to talk about biosecurity and its principles on farm. And we really do hope that this will be of value and you, that you will find this interesting and that this will help you on your farming enterprise. So let's dive in. Firstly, we need to see what biosecurity is. And the four principles that play part of this, we're going to give you some pr practical DIY tips, as well as we're going to look at flies as a biosecurity hazard. Besides good genetics, good quality food, supplementation are all part of a productive flock. When we look at the health triangle, this will be medi medication and management, vaccination, biosecurity, and all of these play a part of the health of your flock. At Mamre, this is the integral part of their production plan. And as we look today at the biosecurity in more depth, we will be looking at the points mentioned earlier. Today we're going to look at these four biosecurity principles. The selection, sanitation, the isolation and movement control on the farm. So this will relate to the selection of your flock, not related to genetics, but related to biosecurity principles. We need to look at these principles individually now. Remember, these guidelines are specifically related to biosecurity and not other performance factors like genetics, etc. So how do we select animals to be purchased? Know the health history of the flock from which the sheep is purchased. Know the health status of the new sheep brought onto the farm and never bring sheep without knowing their vaccination onto your farm. After looking at the selection, we need to look at how do we sanitize? We need to sanitize our hands. We need to look at the entrance point of the farm, food and water troughs, pens and mortality areas. As we know by now, in the situation that we are with COVID, we know that it is very important to sanitize our hands and what the effects they of. Let's start at the entrance when you get to the farm. The entrance of staff, visitors, vehicles, hands, feet and tires. These are very important when we get onto the farm as this is the way that pathogens can be transferred onto your farm. We need to look at the water and the food troughs as well for that is where our sheep actually take their foodstuffs from and that can be also one of the ways that a pathogen can enter the body of the sheep. We need to look at the pens and sections. Pens need to be sanitized completely after each cycle. Remember to sanitize equipment that gets used to clean the pens as well. Mortality pits should be at the perimeter of the farm because it's a big biosecurity risk with flies etc. The next principle we need to look at is the isolation of animals. And this isolation has got to do with when you have purchased animals, how do you isolate new animals on the farm? You offload all new sheep at the perimeter of the farm. All new arrivals to the farm need to be quarantined for 30 days. The wire worm has a life cycle of between 14 and 21 days. And upon this arrival of the new sheep to the farm, the Bracella ovus needs to be tested for. To ensure that new sheep do not share common grazing with existing flock on the farm is also another reason why quarantine is such an important part of bringing new animals onto the farm. Lastly, we need to ensure that the animals that we've brought onto the farm does not share any fence lining with the stock that is existing on the farm. The last principle that we are looking at would be how do I control the movement on my farm? It is important that we keep record of visitors to your farm. We need to ensure that the methods of working are designed to minimize the movement of people, vehicle and equipment to sensitive areas like the lambing pens and the feedlot on the farm. Now that we've looked at the principles of biosecurity, how do I design a biosecurity plan that fits my farm. First and foremost, I would suggest that you get your vet involved in the planning of your biosecurity plan. Any infectious diseases already existing on your farm 
should be looked at by your vet. We need to identify the threats in your area and prioritize a biosecurity plan accordingly. This plan should be updated annually or as the need arises. Now that we've looked at the simple principles that we can implement onto our farm, let's look at the practical things that we can do to implement this plan. As mentioned, these practical steps is something that you can start tomorrow on your farm. First and foremost, we can look at sanitizing hands upon entry. The sanitizing of hands is not negotiable. An alcohol-based sanitizer can be placed at the entry on the farm, the entry of animal housing, and between handling of sick animals. This is a very important step for not transmitting any sickness or disease to the animals that are not sick. Another very important part that we need to sanitize on farm are the vehicles. For these vehicles can carry diseases from other farms to our farm. And this is important as we sanitize these vehicles as well. The first line of defense when entering animal housing is the disinfection of shoes. This is very important as there might be organic matter that is still stuck beneath your shoe that might be in the grooves. And this is very important as organic matter breaks down any disinfectant that might be applied onto that. So just spraying of disinfectant on the sole of your boot will not be sufficient in uh, killing the pathogen. So the disinfection upon entry is of utmost importance when entering any animal housing. And this can be done via a broad spectrum disinfectant called Virogon. You mix this product at 50 grams per 5 liter of water in a foot bath, or you can use 10 grams per 1 liter on a spray bottle. Foot baths are of crucial importance to the entry of any animal housing. Two foot baths will be ideal. The first foot bath is to remove any organic matter, and the second one will be there for disinfection. The reason why we want as little as possible organic matter in the foot bath with the disinfection solution is because organic matter breaks down the active in disinfectants. Now that we've spoken about the disinfectant foot baths, we've got a disinfectant mat that is made out of a durable mesh and will help limit contamination inside animal housing. The disinfectant mat is designed to create a foam on the shoes, extending the contact time with disinfectant and therefore the efficacy of disinfection will be better. These products can be obtained through your local co-op. As previously mentioned, we have said that we will show you what it looks like to have a DIY foot bath. So we've just taken a 25 liter drum, we've cut it in half, and we've taken a brush that you can get from any department store, any hardware store, and we've stuck it on the bottom of this uh, 25 liter drum. Just to show you how to fill and where to fill your foot baths um, at the right level, we're just gonna throw some water in here. So what you want to do is that you want to fill this foot bath just to the tip of the brush. So it's not fully submerged, but just enough so that um, there's a little bit of water at the tip of the brush. So on farm with your disinfectant just to the tips of the brush, you would disinfect your boot like this just to get any organic material off of your boot for a good disinfection. Another product that you can use is the Virogon disinfection mat. This is a very durable um, disinfectant mat with a nice mesh that keeps the organic matter out of the disinfectant. And this is also a removable um, sponge that you can just clean out nicely. And that is then totally waterproof when you pour your disinfectant onto this mat. So you just place this di Virogon disinfectant mat on the ground with your disinfectant poured onto it. And as you step onto it, it will create a, a, a soapy sponge type of layer onto your boot. And that's, that foam will just disinfect your boot to a great effect. It's very important to get your staff on board so that they understand why they are doing what they are doing. If you look at this photo in, in this slide, 
they've moved the disinfectant baths to the side for them to get easier access when entering the premises. Another factor to be looked at is clean water. It is of utmost importance that water troughs and feed troughs are cleaned regularly and kept clean, for this is one of the biggest parts that a pathogen can enter an animal's body. General farm management and clean premises will add to your biosecurity plan. So it is very important that we keep these area as clean and hygienic as possible. Now that we've looked at the biosecurity and the plan that we should implement, another factor that's got a big impact on biosecurity on farm will be the control of flies. We're gonna look at how does flies influence the biosecurity? We need to understand why do we control flies? Because they transmit diseases, they're a nuisance to animals and man, and stress lead to significant production and economic losses. Flies transmit over 130 pathogens to man and animal. These include viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. And some of the diseases that flies cause are like salmonella, botulism, pink eye, and tuberculosis. And all of these factors can lead to weight loss and therefore production loss. To control fly effectively, we need to look at their life cycle. How do they breed? How much do they breed? Where do they breed? And this will give us an understanding of an effective fly control program. As you can see in one of these slides, an adult fly lays its eggs. And out of the eggs, the larval stages will hatch. We've got three larval stages with the first, second, and third. And then they pupate. And out of the pupa comes the adult fly. Now this is very important to understand to control flies effectively. When looking at fly control, a lot of people can't believe that only 20% of the fly population are the physical adult fly. The other 80% is in manure form or situated in the manure in the form of pupa, larvae and eggs. And this is a thing to understand when controlling flies so that we use the correct actives in the correct places. We at Antrovet, we believe in an integrated approach to everything that we do, especially fly control. We're going to look at the cultural method, biological method, as well as the chemical method. So let's look at each one of them individually. The first of these methods that we're looking at in fly control is the physical method. You need to do regular monitoring of the fly population. We need to put out pheromone traps. There must be a regular removal of manure. We need to look at things like water leakages and feed spills. We need to be able to remove mortalities at a very quick rate. Treatment to all critical areas and facilities. And lastly, good ventilation is part of the phys physical methods of fly control. The next method we use is the biological method. We use selective chemicals and applications to protect beneficial insects, insects that are diptera specific like larvicides. The last method that we will be looking at is the chemical method. Normally necessary to keep sufficient level of fly control. It should be compatible with cultural and biological methods. Things to consider is resistance management. We need to rotate actives regularly, I would say seasonally, and we need to focus on products and their application methods, and especially their dilution. Now that we have looked at what the chemical method is, now we need to look at how the chemical method works. The use of different products with different modes of action is very important. Interaction at different levels of the life cycle is to be understood. So as you can see in this slide, we can do something about the adult fly and we can do something in the larval stage to control flies. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything about the eggs produced or the pupa. In the next slides, you can see that the larvae is quite prevalent within the manure. I have to tell you that flies is a prolific breeder 
and can become a nuisance very fast. And that's why we at Antrovet, we believe in an integrated approach. Now that we've spoken about the integrated approach, the next two slides, you can see a heavy maggot infestation. So that is the larvae that will turn into a fly and become a nuisance to yourself. From this stage, they will move on to the pupa stage. And remember, as I said, there's absolutely nothing you can do to control the pupa. And this is why it's so important to minimize the breeding on farm so that the population stay low at all times. As we've looked at the fly control lastly now, we need to understand that all far farms are different and each of their needs will be different and therefore their biosecurity plan will look different. Now that we have looked at all the factors that have an impact on biosecurity, I would like to summarize what we have discussed in this video thus far. Firstly, we need to look at selection. The first line of defense is your selection. We need to know the health history and the status of the animals before purchased to alleviate possible future problems on the farm. Then we looked at sanitation. Disinfecting areas should be present and well maintained at all entrances of the facilities, especially the lambing pens and the feedlot. We need to ensure clean water and feed troughs are available as well, and that we disinfect before and after handling sick animals to minimize disease spreading. Then we look at isolation. Animals brought onto the farm should be put into isolation camps at least for 30 days so that all external and internal parasites can be cleaned out and the potential risks be mitigated. Lastly, we looked at movement control. We should disinfect vehicles coming into the farm and restrict movement past sensitive areas. The restriction of movement inside the production facility should be limited to essential personnel to minimize any potential threats and all of their boots and hands should be sanitized within these sensitive areas. We want to thank you from Antrovet's side that you've taken this time to look at this video and we really hope that this will be of a value to you in your farming enterprise. Thank you very much.